Oh, sorry. So apparently we started with the left foot because that wasn't the first slide. Okay, yeah, <laughs> there we are. So, well, thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, just in case, this is the session about web to sit a tool to collaboratively fix automatic citations in Wikipedia. Uh, my name is Diego de la Era. I am from Argentina. So, if you are Wikipedia editors, you might be aware, of course, that citations are a very important part of Wikipedia, right? We need to include references to support what we are writing on Wikipedia. And inserting citations can be a little bit problematic and actually quite, um, um, we, we have to invest a lot of effort on it because you have to find what the name of the authors are, publication date, uh, publication source. So there is a tool in the visual editor that's called the automatic citations tool, let's just call it like that, um, that greatly simplify inserting citations. Because for example, this is a tool that already exists. So if we want to cite um, a URL, like a newspaper article, we just get the URL for the newspaper article. We paste the URL on this dialog that shows up, click on generate, and then out of magic, uh, the citation appears. Yeah, it gets the, the item type, the name of the authors, publication date, and so on. So, so far, so good. This is really cool. But the problem is that this doesn't always work as expected, as you may also know if you're a user of this automatic citation tool. So, for example, usually what most usually happens is that the item type is misidentified. So we are citing a newspaper article and it says that it's just a, like a web page. Yeah, but it's actually a newspaper article, so it's better if we use that citation template instead. Or it misses the name of the author, or it confuses the, like the publication source with the name of the author. So it says that, it's, that the author is, I don't know, um, the Times. Well, that's not the author, that's the publication source, um, and, and so on. So, to understand why this fails, we need to understand how cit automatic citations work in Wikipedia. And this is going to be just a very brief explanation. So, when we enter a URL in the citation dialog and we click on generate, we are actually using a service uh, maintained by the Wikimedia Foundation that's called Citoid. So, Citoid gets the web page that we are trying to cite it processes it, we, we're not gonna go into the detail, into details how it processes it, and it outputs the citation, right? And to do this, Cytoid is actually relying on a third party uh, library that is not maintained directly by, by, by Wikimedia community, but it's uh, a library that is part of the Sotero project. Just out of curiosity, so Sotero is a reference management software uh, and they do maintain this, they call them translators. So translators, what they do is exactly this. You have a web page. These arrows here represent the translators. So they translate the web pages into citation metadata. Yeah, so this, this little here represents citation metadata. So um, this is great. This works very well when the citation metadata has been embedded on the web page in a structured manner, in a standard manner. So if the webmasters have followed some recommendations to include that metadata embedded on the web page, then we can use what we may call generic translators to get the citation metadata out of those web pages. But the problem is that, well, this is like in an utopic world. In reality, Many web pages do not include this metadata uh, correctly structured or in a standardized way, or they do that partially. So the way how the Zotero community has dealt with this is they write a specific translator for each of these web pages, for actually for each of these domains, or sometimes a group of web pages. Like for example, if there is a, an editorial that uses the same format for all of the newspapers they publish, so then that translator can be used for all of those newspapers. But um, the problem with this is imagine first we need as many translators as uh, um, web pages exist out there, which is a lot. And also, the problem is that sometimes, is the, if these web pages change, and sometimes just very slightly, then the translator no longer works, 
and the citation metadata that is extracted now is wrong. Yeah? So are you following so far? Do you have any questions and comments? We can also, uh, we will have time so that we can also make this a conversation as well. So if anyone has a comment so far or question, yeah. Uh, shall, um, do we have a mic for? Yeah, okay, we'll repeat the question. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you're saying that when um, when when there's not a specific translator for a, a web page that community uh, of Zotero creates a new translator for that page, but you're talking about sites, not individual pages, right? Just to make it clear. Exactly. Usually it's sites or set of sites, not individual. Or, or sometimes it might happen then then that within one site. Maybe, for example, I don't know, like the actuality or like, uh, I don't know, like culture section of that newspaper. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about newspapers because it's usually like the most common case uh, here. Um, maybe the cultural part of that newspaper uses a different format than the, I don't know, economics. Um, but so usually it is by site. Sometimes it is by set of sites. And sometimes you might need more than one per site. Yeah, but usually it's by site. You're right. Thank you. So, so far, like we, we saw, okay, well, so the, we, we may have a problem on the web page. Maybe the structured metadata, the, the metadata is not well structured. Maybe the translator, which is the arrow in the middle, is outdated because the web page changed, we said. And also, well, we might, that, that produces an error in the extracted citation metadata. So how do we fix this? Well, one way would be to manually fix the citation metadata, yeah? But that's, you know, this takes time. And not only does this take time, but also we fix it for that specific use case we wanted to make, but then if somebody else wants to cite another source from the same newspaper, then they have to do it again and again and again. And there's also one more problem that many of you, if you're Wikipedia editors, must may have come up with, which is if the item type is misidentified, so if it's if Cytoid says it's a web page, but you wanted it to, it to be a newspaper, then you have to start from scratch. You cannot use the name of the author that might have been well identified or the publication date. You just have to say, I want to insert the citation manually, and you have to do that everything by hand, right? So this takes time, and it's wasted time in a way because we cannot um, help the rest of the community with that time. Another way to fix this is we go to the webmasters of the sources we want to cite and we try to explain why it, it is so important that they use structured metadata. Uh, I mean, I think this, this is the way to go, definitely, uh, but you know, this might not always work as we expect. Uh, so it requires discussions and, well, conversations and so on. And then the other way to fix this is we fix the translator. So the Sotero community is very open and they are very willing to collaborate and to accept contributions. So it is just a matter of fixing the translator. Why not? Well, but the problem with this is that those translators are written in JavaScript. So you need to have some programming knowledge and not only programming knowledge. So for, for those of you who might be familiar with programming, this is actually stored in a software repository. So you have to actually clone the repository make the changes, ask the maintainers to merge those changes into the main code base. This takes time, apart from knowledge. And then after that has been done, uh, you, we still have to pull this uh, into the, we say, cytoid code. So this, is, this usually takes lots of knowledge and lots of time. So that's, that those were the motivations to go with this project, the web to sit project, which was financed by uh, a grant from the Wikimedia Foundation. The idea behind web to sit is not to create an alternative to Cytoid, but rather um, an, an extension, like an add-on, like a, a workaround. So where Cytoid is working, we continue using Cytoid, but where it is not working until it is fixed upstream on Sotero, we have a way to patch it in a collaborative way. 
so that the community can take care of that in a way that is technical, but is not as technical as having to write a piece of JavaScript code. And in a way that is much more immediate because it's completely under control of our community, the Wikimedia community. We make the change, it's, it's immediately live. We don't have to wait until it's merged into the Sotero code, until it's uh, pulled downstream by the Cytoid code base. So by the way, you can, I will be very briefly talking about this and this hour is not going to be enough to talk about all of it. After the, the talk, you can learn more about the project on that meta page. Luckily, the name was maybe unexpectedly widely, wisely decided uh, so that if you just look for web to sit on Google, for example, or whatever your search engine is, probably it's going to be the top result. So you, you don't have to write it down. But anyways, like the, the slides are also available from pre talks and whatever. So how does this work? Again, it doesn't replace Cytoid. This is very important. It is it's just an add-on, a community-maintained add-on. So where Cytoid is working, we just take what Cytoid says, and where it is not working, we patch it with, uh, uh, with, a, with the community input. So I will now demonstrate how to use this. But before going to the demonstration, are there any questions, any comments? Go ahead. Uh, maybe you explained that and I missed it, but uh, these, uh, well, simplified transla translators, do they automatically, um, can they be automatically converted into Zotero translators or is this something that needs to be done manually? Beautiful question. Uh, <laughs> it's a very good question. It, it is one of the ideas that we had in the original project, but we are, we are not there yet. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to do that, but still like the translators that you can translators or extractors that you can define in web to sit are relatively simplified because we wanted to come up with something that could be done by people who are not proficient in, in coding in programming. So whatever extraction strategy that you may come up with uh, with web to sit would be suboptimal for a Sotero translator. I mean, it could work, but definitely it might be wiser to eventually create a Sotero translator or even come up with a completely different strategy. Like, well, when, when I present this, usually the question pops up whether we shouldn't be relying maybe, in, maybe on artificial intelligence to produce these citations in another way, like providing like um, machine learning, um, models providing them with lots of examples and have that model learn from those examples so that the output is produced in a more automatic way um, but yeah i mean we, we have this as an option actually we are tracking every open task and suggestions on a fabricator on fabricator projects this is one of the tasks that are open but they're definitely not not, not even far from being addressed yet any other comments or questions before uh, I proceed to the demonstration? Okay, so I'll now, yes. I, uh, oh, sorry. Maybe uh, if you can say how applicable this will be for uh, the different languages uh, or it is um, the focus was on English language until now or how you see that for uh, all the other languages? Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, actually, the, when we were thinking of this, um, we were thinking where should be, because the idea is that the community is going to be collaboratively defining a set of configurations, web to seed configurations for different domains, right? So we were wondering where should we store this configuration? Should we store it on Wikipedia, maybe? Should we store it on, I don't know, like on a, on a Git repository? Should we store it on Meta? And Finally, we, or maybe, on, on, I don't know, on, on commons. Finally, we decided to store this on meta because we want the configuration to be across languages. Because we thought the metadata that comes out from a newspaper, it doesn't matter where you're going to use that metadata. It doesn't matter if you're going to use it in an English Wikipedia, in the Spanish Wikipedia, Azerbaijani Wikipedia. The metadata is always going to be the same. 
What changes is how you accommodate that metadata, but that's out of web 2 sit business because that is taken care of by citation templates. So as long as citation templates are taken care of by the, by the, cor by the corresponding Wikipedia communities, citation metadata shouldn't change from one language to another. So answering part of your question, whatever configuration is made uh, and by an English user, a Russian user, a Russian speaking user, sorry, a Spanish speaking user, it's gonna be, it, it's able to be reutilized by users that speak other languages. And also when we started this project, we thought this would may it, later, I mean, we did some research, uh, this is very long, but the project included a, a research sub-project. Um, our initial assumptions were not exactly uh, um, supported by the research results. Uh, we thought initially that this would benefit um, Wikipedia languages other than English more. And we thought that because, because many of the Zotero maintainers speak English, we were, th we were expecting that there were more um, Zotero translators for English sources rather than for other sources. This wasn't supported. I mean, we cannot say from the results of our research that this is true, but of course, as it usually happens in research, we cannot say it's false, <laughs> but we just can't say it's true. Um, but yeah, we were expecting this, that because, and it, it sometimes happens, like if you're an English speaker and you have a source that doesn't work, Imagining that you know how to deal with GitHub repositories. You're pretty much well prepared to ask someone at the Sotero team, hey, I'm having this, this problem, can you please help me here, whatever. But if you're a Spanish speaker, for example, and you do not speak English, not only, have, not only do you have to know how, what a GitHub repository even is, but also you have to understand that you have to actually write in English because most of the uh, Sotero contributors are English speakers. So of course that represents a challenge. Yeah, um, well, <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> but maybe it's, it's the ring reminding me that I should go to the demonstration, so thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this off. So again, this is gonna be um, a brief demonstration. The tool, as I said, it's, a, it's, it's still a technical tool, so don't expect this to be very easy. Definitely not, unfortunately. Um, but if you want to get more documentation, I would recommend you to go to the project page where, all, where you will find lots of documentation pages. Again, and as a disclaimer, uh, we know that this could be simplified way, way more. And we hope that if we get more people interested in the project, then we can justify, continue working on it and making it simpler to use. So first thing first, first things first, and sorry, the production team that I'm messing things here. I'm sorry, I don't know what I did, probably I just unplugged. Is, are we okay again? Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Okay. You, you know, they were telling me, maybe you should do that. I was like, no, I'm gonna do it my way. And of course they were right. <laughs> so sorry. Actually, I don't, I don't do my presentation for this part, but let's see if it, if it goes back. Okay, and of course it's not full screen, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so the first thing, how to use it. We don't have to actually contribute to web 2 sit to use it. We can use the configurations that other people have created and actually leverage from those uh, contributions. So to use web 2 sit the first thing to do is to install it as a user script. You know that we, you can extend how your Wikipedia looks like different ways. You can change your preferences, you can install gadgets, and you can install user scripts. So web 2 sit is enabled on Wikipedia, on whatever Wikipedia actually that uses visual editor. By the way, and between parentheses, if you're not a visual editor user, you can also use web 2 sit but I'm not gonna focus on how to do it now. I mean, we can discuss how this can be done, but the easiest way if you, is if, you, if, you, if your Wikipedia uses the visual editor. So starting from the web 2 sit homepage, you will find like a section which is getting started. And well, in the getting started section, you have the install subsection. So 
I mean, following the instructions here or even the more advanced documentation in this other, in this other web page, you will install the web to sit user script in your Wikipedia. This is something that you just have to do once, yeah? And actually, uh, it really surprised me that for we presented this at the Wikimedia Hackathon in May, and somebody for, from the Azerbaijani Wikipedia really liked it. And for example, they even he was one of the maintainers actually of the Wikipedia, and he even installed this by default for all of the Wikipedia users, which was something that would, made me really happy. <laughs> Poor, poor people, actually. <laughs> so, well, um, how to do this? Well, you, I'm not gonna go into the details, but you have to open a file, like a page on your Wikipedia that is the common JS file. This is a personal file of yours. And you have to add some code to this, um, to this file to enable this user script. So actually you go to this common JS file, which is your personal common JS file, and you will copy this uh, code down here and paste it at the end of this file, which is actually this part here, probably, this part in my code. Mine is, uh, well, it looks different uh, because I have it actually installed somewhere else because I want this to be working on all Wikipedias. There is also a way for you to install it for all Wikipedias, not just, for example, English or Spanish Wikipedia. Uh, but again, so just to, to be clear about it, first step, you install the user script following the instructions that, are, that appear in how to install web 2 sit And how do you know if the installation has worked successfully? Where, well, if you're editing a Wikipedia article, in this example, I'm editing my sandbox, which is like this area where you can just test your Wikipedia editing skills and screw it up. So if I go to edit, and remember I'm using, I'm using here the visual editor, and I click on site, you will see this little web to sit checkbox there. So if the checkbox is on, it means that the automatic citation is gonna use web to sit. If it's off, it means that it's not gonna use it. So let's go with this example. I, uh, I got this example yesterday, just a random example from one newspaper in Singapore. So. I get this URL. I want to enter this URL as a source in Wikipedia. So I paste the URL here and I click on generate. So because I have the web to sit user script, user script installed, I should get two results instead of one. The result? The results at, hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah okay. So the result at the top is the the regular result, the one that comes from Cytoid. This one, if we want to change it, you know, we can do it manually, we can convince the, web, the webmaster to change it, we can change the Sotero code. Remember what we said before. And the one from below is the one that comes from web 2 sit So far, both are the same. And that's because web 2 sit has, be has not been configured by the community for this source yet. So it's just using what Cytoid returns. But the difference with this second result is that we can change it using web 2 sit okay? So if I want to do that, I click on where it says web 2 sit <clears throat> Sorry. And this is gonna open, let me just maybe zoom in a little bit. This is gonna open like the translation summary page. So it says, okay, so for, for, this, for this path, for this web page, on the todayonline.com domain. This is the translation output. This is what web 2 sit is returning for this specific web page. Um, like this is the item type, it is a web page. That's actually one of, the, one of the errors we identified here. So it says it's a website, it should be a newspaper article. The title is okay. And also maybe the source, it says today which is the name of the newspaper, but it doesn't have the publication date and it doesn't have the author name. Yeah, that's missing. And that's reflected, of course, in this, in this table. It says it's a web page, the title is okay, the publication source is fine, the language has been identified as English, which is also true, but the publication date and the author names are missing. So always, when you want to edit web 2 sit configurations, the first thing that you should do is tell web 2 sit and also the community of web 2 sit users, what is actually the expected output? Maybe we don't know how to get it, but the first step is, this is what we should have gotten, 
Maybe we will later see how to do it. But first things first, this is what we should get. Because this guides the rest of the community to understand what is actually that we are expecting for, the, for this web page. So to edit that, which is this, this part here, the expected output, which is currently, it's currently empty because nobody has configured this yet. So I go here where it says edit. I will add a new translation test. And this translation test will correspond to a very specific web page, which is the web page that I tried to, to insert. So I'm just going to copy the URL path and paste it here. Just the path, which is the part that goes after the domain. So this is the path of the web page that we tried to insert. And we will start field by field telling the web 2 seed community what we are expecting from this web page. So I add my first field, which is the item type field. Remember, we got web page, but what did we want? A newspaper article, exactly. So we're going to choose that from this list. It's a newspaper article. So we go next with the next field, which is title. The title, remember, so the cited result was fine. So we can just copy it from, from here, but we can also just go to the original source, select the title, and paste it in this field here. Okay, so we continue with the author name. I'm not, I'm not gonna go into details here. We have, we have two options. We may split first and last names. This doesn't necessarily make sense always. Sometimes it's the name of an institution. Uh, sometimes some languages do not make that distinction uh, or it's not clear. So we, the author last name field may also be used for the author full name field. And that's the field I'm gonna use. So back to the original source. This was written by Charlene Go. Okay. So next field would be the date field, which is the publication date field. It was published, it says here, I'm zooming in, uh, published on the 14th of August, 2023. Librarians would tell me if I should put August 14th or August 15th when it was updated. Please don't be mean with me. I will just choose August 14th. So 2023, August 14th. Yeah, um, I have the mic here. The caps lock uh, in the author name. Okay, in this in this case, the, you saw that it was. Um, it's a good question. Um, when we create the procedure for extracting the data from the web page, after we selected what data we want to extract, we can apply transformations to that data. There is one transformation step that has not been implemented yet, though but there is one transformation step that is a capitalization transformation step that you can tell it, make it a title case, make it all small case, make it all uppercase. This is not yet implemented, so it's not working. So you won't be able to deal with it at this moment, but that's the idea to deal with that at the transformation stage. But that will make sense when I go to the procedure. This is just the test so far. So here we, 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 sh we say what we want the way we want it. If we want it in small letters, we just write it in small letters, yeah? So I continue, well, this is the, the date again. Sorry, I, I'm not respecting the format. It should be like this. As it says down there, I'm gonna zoom in a little more. So the next field would be the published in field, which is the name of the, uh, it says here the work, the name of the work which contains the cited resource, which is the name of the newspaper. And again, we think that Cytoid was okay with that, so I'm just gonna write it down today. That was the way how Cytoid got it. And then finally, we have language field. Uh, we can, we, we can write, it, write this in different ways, as it's explained here. I'll just use EN for English. So this, we said, it's gonna be saved as a configuration file. So we go here where it says review changes and save. This is going to produce a file that we don't understand. We don't need to understand what it means. So we just go to the bottom of the page. We may write like a edit summary what we did here, like configured 
a test case, and we just published this as, as a wiki page. It's, be, it's being published on Meta as a configuration page for web 2 set So if I go back to the translation summary page, which you may remember, if I refresh this page, now the expected output column is going to show what we are expecting for this web page, right? So we are expecting a newspaper article, not a web page. So because we have defined an expected output, which we can get for each field a score. So for the item type field, this is failing. We are getting a 0% score because web page is not newspaper article. For the title, we're getting a 100% score because the titles match. What we got is what we wanted to get. For Also for the published in field and for the language. And for the author and publication date, we're getting a 0% score because Saito was returning nothing and we wanted something. Yeah. So, so far, we've defined the test case. Next, I'm going to show you how we can change this column, what we actually get. But before going there, I, I'm wondering if we have any questions or comments. I know this can be tricky and complicated, but uh, also like know that we do have some resources like online workshops that we have uh, made in the past that are recorded and available on the web to sit page. But we can also like, if you have comments now, we can address them now. Yeah. Oh, the mic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's coming over there. Yeah. Thank you. It might be easy to just repeat. Um, you want to hear a voice. <laughs> if someone else uh, edits the expected output, what will happen is a uh, diff in that wiki page or? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's also one of the reasons why we decided to use Meta as a repository for these configuration files. We could have come up with a repository of our own, but that would have required extra work to have like a repository that would use the same like user permissions that Wikipedia uses, that tracks differences between one revision and the other. So you can just check, maybe not in the most friendly way because it's just a, a JSON file. I mean, we do have some ideas to make this better and easier, but you can just check a diff as you would check a diff on whatever wiki page. So you can see exactly who contributed to that file what they changed from that file uh, and what they, and, and exactly from what to what they changed yeah and because we are sharing the same file across the whole community if you said that the publication date should be the 14th of august and somebody says that the publication date should be the 15th of august because that's that's the date it was updated they can change it if you don't agree you can change it back again. They would start an edit war, and you would go to the discussion page and and talk why you, you should it should be the 14th and not the 18th, 15th, or the other way around. Okay. Any other uh, comments or questions? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Diego, I'm falling at the first hurdle. I'm trying to follow along with a problematic website we have in New Zealand called Papers Past. Um, and I'm failing at the thank you, <laughs> failing at the full, at the first hurdle because even though I've got Web Two Sit enabled, it's only giving me one option, which does not include the Web Two Sit link through which you accessed this thing. I'm assuming there's another way to access this tool to actually yeah, put so in the test case. So it says you, you say that the checkbox is enabled. Uh, the, web the checkbox, checkbox is, enabled, is enabled, but I've only got the Cytoid option. I don't have two options for some reason. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I get two options on other websites, so it's not that the tool isn't working for me. It's that Papers Past isn't working with site. With okay. Web interesting. Well, we, yeah. we can we can definitely uh, get to those and see okay. what's happening, and maybe we can open a tick in fab on Fabricator to have that addressed because that that would be a bug. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I like this. I, I always remember when. Well, this is maybe not the best example for a Wikipedia. Uh, a conference, but I remember when I think it was Bill Gates that was presenting, I don't know what version of Windows, and it crashed during the presentation. It was amazing. <laughs> so if it happens to Bill Gates, it can happen to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Um, if we don't have any more questions or comments, I can show you the other part of it, which is the how we change the output. 
OK, so let's go. So I'm going to change, I'm going to click on edit here to change the translation output. And to, trans to change the translation output, we will have to define a translation procedure. Yeah, so this procedure that we, that we will define, we're going to be basing that on a specific web page template. But then the same procedure will be able to be used on other templates of the same domain. Yeah. So this is important because otherwise, if we have to define a procedure for every web page, this is this is becoming more complicated than actually, you know, fixing the citation manually in the end. But the idea is that we define this for just one web page template in the domain, and as long as other web pages from the same domain look like the template that we've chosen, then that procedure will be able to be used for other web pages. We won't discuss this in detail here today, but should there be different formats within the same domain, then we can define multiple templates for the same web website. So that if the page looks like this, use this procedure. If the page is, uh, looks like that, use this other procedure. But in this example, we will just show how to do it with one single uh, template. So I add a new translation template, and I'm going to say what web page path I am basing this template on. And it is very important that I specify this here, because if other web 2 seed contributors come later and want to change this, they need to understand why we define the procedures the way we define them. So it's important we tell them on what template we base this on. So this is the, the, temp, the web page we, based, we are basing this procedure on, and we will start again, field by field, saying how we are going to do to get the expected output for that web page. So first, it's the item type field. So it is likely that all web pages from this domain are going to be a newspaper article. So it makes sense to tell web 2 sit just return newspaper article for this domain, no matter what web page you are you're getting from this. So for that, we have, in, in, in this um, procedure stage, we have two steps. The first step is the selection step where we tell web 2 sit where to get the data from. And the second step is the transformation step where we change the data. Like we, we change it to rem remember small letters instead of uh, capital letters. So we have a selection step type, which is the fixed selection, which is always return the same thing, no matter what web page it is. And we're going to tell it to always return newspaper article. And that's it for the item type field. So we continue with the next field, which is the title field. Do you remember, was Cytoid returning something good for this field? Yes. So there is a selection step, which is the Cytoid selection, which tells web 2 sit just use what Cytoid says for this field. And what field do we want from Cytoid? Well, we want the title field, because that's where, where the title information is. So we just say, for the title, get what Cytoid says for the title. Yeah, so we are done with the title field too. Um, because of time constraints, I'm going to skip some interesting parts. I'm sorry. So maybe I will skip. Um, I'm, well, let, let's, let's see what happens with, with the time we have available. So for now, I will just change the item type and we'll, I will reuse the rest from Cytoid. And if we do have some time, I'm going to show you how to change the author and the date field, which are a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we'll we continue with the published in field. And again, Cytoid was OK here. So when I add a new translation procedure, the default configuration is getting what Cytoid would return for the published in field. And finally, for the language, I add a new translation procedure. So just use what Cytoid says for language. So this is the template that I'm going to configure for now. I'm going to save this configuration. This is going to be saved on a separate file on Meta, which is the, the translation template file. So I'm, I'm going to put here a configured uh, translation template. So now. If I refresh the translation summary page, the item type has changed to newspaper article instead of web page. 
Well, the rest remains the same because we told web 2 c to reuse Cytoid and author and publication date, we didn't configure it, so we are still getting nothing there. But at least it improved a little, right? Now, this is, and this is actually maybe a good example of how, of why it is important to do this collaboratively. Maybe that's the only thing I know how to do. I just know how to change the item type. I have no clue how to change the author date, the author or the publication date, but I was able to configure what was expected. So I've done a lot. I configured a test and I changed the item type. And then someone that may not speak English, so maybe for them it's difficult to understand who should be the author or what should be the publication date, but understands how to use web 2 a little bit more, can come and configure the, the procedure for the author and the procedure for the date, yeah? This might, I mean, in a conference where we're all speaking English, it might sound weird that we may not know what the author or the publication date is, but I've come up with pages that have characters that I don't even know what they are. And for me, it is very difficult if that's, if, if what's there, it's the, pub, the author name. It's like, or maybe it says published by John Doe. How do I know what is the published by part and what is the John Doe part? I mean, it's, it's very difficult. So having someone say that before, what is the name? It's very useful. So if I go back now to Wikipedia, and I generate the citation for this web page again. Now the item type has changed in the um, the, the item type has changed in the citation that came from from web to sit, yeah, which is the only thing that we were able to configure so far, okay. And well, do we have? Um, I'm gonna show just one more thing. We still have though some time, some time, but do we have? Any questions? Yeah. Um, I don't understand why you, we have the checkbox um, if you are still going to see the, both outputs. So why not have it always enabled and people can just choose the one that is most appropriate? Yeah, it's a very good question. And the reason is that I'm a fearful programmer and I wasn't sure whether I would break stuff. So I wanted to make sure that users would have a way to go back to original behavior without having to uninstall the user script, which, which is actually a little long to do. This is already quite stable and I haven't seen any situation where it actually breaks things. Worst thing that might happen is, uh, as Temsi found, that you don't get the result from web to sit. Is, though, although it's a little weird and that's the way I would like to check, but um, what, because it's an interesting uh, situation. Um, so it, we could remove it, but, um, but yeah, that, that's the reason why it's there, but definitely we could just remove it, yeah. And by the way, and what I wanted to show, this is one article, right? But then I said that one template should be able to be used for other web pages from the same domain. So this is another, I mean, I'm not, I don't even, I'm not even reading the title, so I hope I'm, I'm not doing something wrong here. So I'm just copying this URL for this different article from the same source. If I copy that URL here and I click on generate, hopefully the result from web to sit should say newspaper article instead of website because it is using the same template that was defined for the other URL for this new, for this new URL. And well, let's just, Let's just do it like, I'm not gonna explain in detail how I'm gonna get the author name, but let's, let's just show it so that you, you know that it's possible that I'm not lying to you. <laughs> but, but also so that you know that I'm not lying to you that it's not easy. Um, because we want to get this that it's here, for example. So how do we get this part in an HTML? An HTML file is the file that defines how the web page is gonna look like or what the content of the web page is. So sometimes to refer to specific parts of a web page, there is a language that is called XPath that lets us refer to specific parts of the web page. Like for example, pick, oh, they want me out. <laughs> like pick the uh, element that has this specific class 
or maybe pick the element that is under this other element. Yeah, that's a way. So you have to use a language that's called XPath. Of course, this is technical. You need to understand how to, for example, use this that opens here on the side, which is the inspector of the source code. Yeah, so for example, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little fast here because I don't wanna bore anyone, but, sorry. So if I use like this selector and tell it like, okay, where is the name of the author? Here. So for example, this is the element that has the author name and it has this specific class. I know this is not the best uh, way to, to refer to this element, but I'm gonna use it anyway just to show you that this is possible. So this is the name of the class of the element where the name of the author is. It's like, again, this is a, pare a technical parenthesis. I promise it's not gonna last more than two or three minutes, just for those who may follow, but we're gonna go back to, um, to more simple stuff in a, mo a moment. So I just edit the translation template once more. I add a new field. This is gonna be the author field. And I'm gonna tell it, use the XPath selection. And the way how I'm gonna configure the XPath selection is get whatever A element. This is an A element. Sorry for those that are not following. It's just one second. So this is an A element. So pick the A element that has a class that reads like that. This should work. Let's see. So I review the changes and save. This is going to update the configuration file. I'm doing this myself, but somebody else could come and do it instead. So if this worked, when I go here and I update the translation summary, this may not work, by the way. It's getting the author name now. And now if I go back to Wikipedia and I use the URL again, then the author name is here, right? Um, now, the last thing that I wanted to show you is, yeah. I'm no expert, but uh, it seems to me that this is pretty easy, so I don't understand why Citoid wasn't doing this. I mean, it, it's, no, I mean, I mean the, the, the name wasn't there something, it wasn't, the name wasn't there by a chance. I mean, it, it was in a, it, was, it seemed to me that it was well formatted. I mean, shouldn't it be, shouldn't it be easy for Cytoid and Zotero to find the name with such a class or it is complicated for some reason? I don't understand because I, I don't really understand anything about this. What, what, what is your intuition? Why do you think it is well formatted? What, no, what, because what are the, the visuals? Yeah. The tag was the author profile or something. So it, I mean, maybe it's not so common. I don't know. That, that's ah, it's right. not so common. Okay. That, that class that the webmaster chose to define the class of the element that contained the author name is something that he came up with. Ah, okay, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. okay. There is a structured way, by the way, which is very common lately, which is called JSON-LD. JSON-LD is, is one of the ways how you can in, in, um, include um, structured metadata in your web page. This is increasingly being used web 2 sit does support JSON-LD. I didn't show you how to use it because, um, I mean, it was another way to get it. The problem we have is that Sotero is not supporting JSON-LD. They plan to support it. They've been planning to support this for very long. So there are lots of web pages that do have structured metadata. It's like you cannot complain to them because they will say, you, yeah, we're using JSON-LD, which is a very standard format, but Sotero is not supporting this. Probably they're not supporting this because they want to do it in a better way. With web 2 sit we came up with a good enough way to deal with it. So some websites that do have the data on JSON-LD, you will be able to pull it from with web 2 sit And the thing that I wanted to show you is the last part. web 2 sit also has, that you can also access through the, um, the project's homepage. There is, uh, well, I'm not gonna just, I'm gonna just go there and you will find it on the, on the homepage, I'm sorry, because I want to have some time for, for questions. There is a monitor that is regularly checking 
all web 2 seed configuration files. It's checking the test files and the template files. So this list here are all the domains for which the web 2 seed community has configured configuration files, right? So regularly, every time there is a change on the configuration file or every 30 days, the monitor runs the tests and check if the output is matching the test or not. And it returns a score according to that. So if, the, for, for example, for www.cronista.com, which I think is an Argentinian newspaper, the tests are matching the output. So we have a 100% score. I can open this and check like the details in this, in this page. But then down below, I see that, for example, this, elespectador.com, which I think is a Uruguayan uh, newspaper, the score is just 52.38. So probably either it was never configured well, or it could also have happened that one day the page changed and what was working one day is, no, is not working anymore. So a good thing is that you can subscribe to this page as if it was whatever page. So whenever the score changes, you should get a notification telling you, hey, this web page that had a 100% score, now it's having a 50% score. So maybe you should come and check what's happening. Maybe you should update the template. Or maybe somebody vandalized the, 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 like the or vandalized or maybe just unintentionally broke the, the test file. And maybe you have to check what happened and change it again. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm saying this very fast. We do have a problem with those notifications, unfortunately, because of the way how this bot is working. We should fix this soon. You, you wouldn't get an email, actually. You would have to check on, the, on, your, on your watch list page, uh, which is not ideal. Uh, but know that we are working on it. So that's it yeah. um, for the presentation. Yeah. I uh, have I, another question. Uh, how do you deal with uh, paywalls? Because maybe I saw the author names because I paid, or I I, I have so, I had some free articles I could read, but the the software that you use to watch the page cannot access the article. That's an excellent question, and and there we behave just like Cytoid behaves, which is we do not deal with them. We cannot deal with them. So if the Wikimedia servers do not have access to the source, then Cytoid or web 2 sit won't have access either. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, you, it, it depends what error it is being returned by the web server. Um, yeah, ideally you should get a zero percent or whatever uh, for mismatch. I, and I think there is a bug going on that in some cases you get an error instead of a 0%. An error might, might translate to the problem that Tamsi found, which you don't see citations at all. Um, yeah, that, that, that's actually, it's, I think it's something that it's being discussed for Cytoid even. Um, well, and last thing before, um, because I want to continue discussing this until the very end, but before that, I would like to, to thank my, my, my colleagues in the web to seed project. This was again a project that was financed by the Wikimedia Foundation. We had a community and communications team led by Evelyn Heidel from Wikimedistas de Uruguay. We also had a developer team where I was there and also Denis Tobar from Wikimedia Chile. And we also had a research team, which also from the web to seed project page, you can find out more about the research that the research team uh, did which was um, the, the people at the research team were Jimena del Rio, Nidia Hernandez, and Romina de, Le, de Leon. So thank, I would like to thank to all of them. And also thank you for your attention. But not, we still have five minutes and 36 seconds, I think. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions or comments, we can have them now. And you can also contact me on using whatever of this email or um, Twitter or Mastodon or um, I don't know, handles. And also, you can also write on the discussion page of the web 2 seed project. And also on the web 2 seed project page, you have a section about contributions, how you, what you can do to contribute. I mean, we can also discuss about this during the conference as well. But if you have any questions check. or comments now, okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Check, check.
was going to ask, uh, you told that you are planning to um, further develop them into Zotero, what are they? Translators. Uh, translators. So I was wondering, for example, would, do you have in mind other outputs such as uh, creating uh, entries in Wikidata? If, sorry, can you uh, restate crea that? Creating uh, um, entries, items in Wikidata <laughs> for, for, for these uh, citations, for these sources. Okay, um, let's see if, I, if this replies your question. Because, uh, again, we tried to keep the web to seed project as small as possible. So that it's just an add-on for Cytoid. I do know that there are discussions around Cytoid. Well, first, like if Cytoid should, for example, check whether there is um, an item on Wikidata for the item that is being cited and replace, for example, that citation with a site queue template that refers to the QID of that source, for example. Or also like if there is not an item yet to create it. And also, there is, I, I know there is also discussions about whether there shouldn't be an, easy, an easier way to create a Wikidata item out of the Cytoid response. But because Web2Sit is an add-on to Cytoid, whatever is addressed on the Cytoid level should, um, inc would include Web2Sit. So if this is addressed, it makes no sense that we address this at the web to seed level. We should actually focus on addressing this at the site level, which is uh, actually like below or, or above, I don't like, yeah. Okay, does this answer your, your question? Okay, thank you. And I think, yeah, I think we are, um, but you, you will kick me off. <laughs> Why should I kick, my, kick myself off? <laughs> Oh, and just one one last comment, because I, I made this look so easy. You know, you know when you know when you when you go to like for example like a circus show and you see the people doing acrobatics and they're smiling and you say, oh, this is so easy. I should definitely try trapeze. And you go back to your home and you cannot believe and like how somebody can do that. Well, um, you might have that feeling when you go back to your like home or whatever and try to do it. Just if possible, not be frustrated immediately and contact me and I would be able to, to help you ho hopefully to sort it out. Okay, so I think we could um, just close it. So thank you very much for being here today and looking forward to seeing you in the, around the conference. Thank you.